Thanks everyone for coming to my talk. I'm going to be talking about uh, hosting a web service on a small, cheap uh, embedded device. Uh, some of you may know that I make a device for vintage computers. It's a network adapter, so you can hook it up to old computers and browse the internet. And that appeals to people like me who collect that stuff. But I think even if you're not into vintage tech, this will be an interesting talk because these devices can be used for so much more. I use these for home automation, like controlling my window blinds, telling me when I've got mail in my mailbox. Um, you can use them as LED controllers. It's really cool. And I'm going to be talking about this actually at um, Vintage Computer Festival Southwest in Dallas in June. So if you're in, in Dallas, come check it out. Um, I'm going to talk about what the device is for a minute and how I've been using it for my product. And then I'm going to do a live demo of the web server. I think you're going to find that pretty cool. So um, what this device is, it's called a Node MCU. And a lot of people just call it an ESP8266, which is actually this little tiny chip on top of it. And this small chip is dirt cheap. This entire board is $3 off AliExpress. Don't, don't get it off Amazon. It's like $20 off Amazon. But what it is, it's a 32-bit, uh, oops, go back, 32-bit RISC processor. It can run at 80 megahertz or 160 megahertz. Um, it has 160K of RAM. It's got four megabytes of flash. It has Wi-Fi built in. Uh, it supports ultra deep sleep, like like basically almost zero power consumption. So if you wanted to put this thing to sleep for like a month and have it wake up on occasion to sample some data, it supports that. It's got all kinds of I.O. You can even wire an SD card directly up to it. So the amount of space you have available for logging or data, it's, it's, it's basically unlimited. And like I said, it was cheap. Um, so I'm going to do... A uh, little demo of what I built. What I built was an interactive terminal that runs on this thing. So I have this device plugged in over USB to my computer right now, and I have a program called Hyper Terminal running. Anyone who's been around for like the Windows 95, Windows 98 days will be familiar with this, but it's uh, it's a terminal that works over a serial port. So for example, um, uh, this device is plugged in over USB, and here it is right here. It shows up as a COM port, communication port. Um, so I have this connected to Wi-Fi in the office right now, and you can see when I type some stuff, things happen. Cool. Uh, I'm going to connect to a few servers uh, just to show off a little bit what the product does. So um, again, for some context, this is this is how computers would talk to one each other, uh, talk to one another before the World Wide Web existed. They would use terminals like this. So I'm going to connect to a terminal at uh, internet address of bbs.eotd.com. And I'm going to tell it what sort of terminal I am and whether or not I support color graphics. And there you go. I'm logging into an old school uh, server. And now that I'm connected here, I can check some mail, join a chat with people, download some files, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but that's about as far as I want to take that example. I'll give you one more example of something a bit more modern. I wrote a web proxy um, at theoldnet.com. And when I'm connected here, I can go to websites and read it in plain text. Obviously, um, server-side rendered sites work fine. Client-side render site, side render sites don't. But I'm going to go to uh, 68k.news. This is just a really lightweight news reader. And uh, I'm going to load up uh, some links. Um, Maybe something not too controversial, NS NFL draft, sure, I don't know. Um, but let's go with uh, Carolina Panthers, sure. So this is giving me a list of all the links on the page, and I just type in what number I want to go to. Now I'm reading an article about football, which I know nothing about. But that's that's the current product present day. That's, that's what people do when they plug these things in. It also supports. Um, uh, Ethernet emulation and point-to-point uh, -point protocol emulation. So it's not just text only that this thing supports. You could actually use this to browse web pages through a web browser on an old computer. But um, the thing I'm here to demo today is the web server. I think it's uh, pretty crazy that you can actually do this on a device like this so cheaply. And I wanted to demo, here it is right here. So left-hand side of the screen is connected to this device over USB. 
right hand side of the screen is connected to this device over Wi-Fi and it's showing this web page. Everything is on the device. There's no code running in the cloud somewhere, no, none of that. Every 100% of what I'm showing you is on device. Um, this is on the office network. So anybody that's in the office right now, you could go to the old net.local. I'd rather you did that after the demo though, because you might like overload it and crash it or something like that. So I want to talk about three main features here. Um, the first one is MDNS. Um, you notice I was able to go to this by typing in a domain name. And it's like, well, how did that happen? Because normally when you connect to a Wi-Fi network uh, locally, you'd have to go by IP address, which you can see right here. Normally you go to 192, 168, blah, 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 blah. MDNS is running on this device. And what that's doing is it's broadcasting it to the network. Like, hey, this is my domain name. And it's dot local because it's not somewhere out on the internet. So right away, I think that's super cool because it makes it user friendly, right? I, I can plug this into any network and tell people to go to like a human readable address and they can just get there. So, you know, vintage PC stuff aside, that that's kind of neat. You can think of all kinds of crazy things to invent that you could do with that. Um, so what did I do with this? Well, um, everything you see on the right-hand side of the screen, these are commands that let you configure different features on the device. And it's kind of a pain to type it in. So I wanted to make a user interface to let people change different settings, like what port things run on, what speed they run at. Up at the top here, I have an address bar for dialing. And I'm going to um, go to the exact same uh, website, yep, bbs.eotb.com. And when I hit call, on the left-hand side, you're going to see it actually make the same connection I showed you before. So I'm issuing a request over Wi-Fi. There's an API running on this little tiny device, and it's going to forward that information to some other piece of code that's going to establish an, uh, another connection over Wi-Fi and give you output over serial. So here we go. And I think that alone was kind of cool. Um, so if you don't want to type in some complicated address, you can just copy and paste it perhaps from a website. And I'm just going to hit this hang up uh, link here. It's going to disconnect. Um, so, so that's, I guess, feature number two I wanted to demo is the concept of hosting a web server on there. Uh, the last thing I want to demo is file system. So I mentioned before that uh, this device has four megabytes of flash. I actually split that into two pieces. I split it up so that it's a two megabyte flash for firmware. And I also have a two megabyte flash for file system. So I have two megs of storage. And that's this file manager section down here. I have a few files already uploaded. Um, for example, like here's a readme file I can click. That's coming straight off the device. Um, this web page itself is index.html. You just don't see it in this list. It's on that file system on the device. I even up uploaded some other HTML and JavaScript. Like here is uh, an alternative file browser. So you can just put whatever you want on here. Uh, I wanted to do a bi-directional demo of uploading and downloading files through the web and through the terminal. So I'm going to start by uh, picking an image to upload. And I'm going to start with uh, Black Mage from Final Fantasy I holding the Starbucks coffee. Uh, so I choose it, hit upload. You can see the terminal is giving you some output. And the page refresh, and I've got uh, my mage here. And when I click on it, there it is. So uh, when I learned how to do this, I was like floored that you, you could even do that. It's really cool. Um, but also, uh, if I go to the uh, terminal and I want to point out some commands that I've added here, um, I can list files, upload files, download files, and I can do a file system check to clean up any corruption. All the commands are prefixed with AT. That is a standard. Uh, uh, that's just like a industry standard for modem commands. But I'm going to say AT and LS, and it lists all the files that you see over on the website. And you can see my mage image there. I'm going to go AT and DL to download and type in the path. And it's telling me I'm ready to receive. This is actually how I used to do stuff back in the day, keep in mind. So it's like uh, this is the the tedious task people used to have to go through just to send files to one another. So I just downloaded that PNG through the terminal. And when I open up the fi uh, folder it said it would go in, there it is right there. Pretty cool. And to round it out, I'm going to send a file. Uh, so um, 
So that file, just to be clear again, that file was downloaded over the USB port on my computer, not over uh, Wi-Fi. So back to the uh, commands. So go here, uh, send a file, browse. Uh, I'm going to rename that because I think there's a file limit uh, constraint there, or file file name length constraint. All right, so now it's uploading that eight kilobit Im uh, kilobyte image. And if I go refresh the website of things, uh, there you go, we've got the old net.png and there's the, uh, there's the logo. Um, that's, that's the demo. Uh, this was all written in the Arduino IDE. I have a web server over here. Um, you know, I can register some routes and have handlers for all the routes and, um, I'm not going to get into the code. I'm going to wrap up in just a moment. I just want to say if um, if anyone has any questions about the actual code, uh, feel free to ask me. If you want to talk about anything offline, uh, let me know. Um, the most interesting takeaway for me is how difficult a lot of this was to do and how much we take for granted nowadays with multitasking operating systems and being able to do things asynchronously and having multiple threads. Like this device has one thread and it's handling the serial connection, it's handling the web server, it's handling MDNS. Um, all of its operations are happening in one looping thread. And you got to make sure that um, none of those uh, actions are blocking. Like, for example, if I had something that was uh, expensive in the terminal, the web server wouldn't respond or vice versa. If I had something expensive going on on the website of things, the terminal wouldn't respond. Um, it, it's just a, a different concept. Some of the ways you implement things have to do it uh, like a long running task in little tiny pieces over time. And uh, anyway, I think it's a good exercise at low level stuff too. So that's, um, that's it. That's my, my demo. Thanks.